The Critique of Practical Reason by Immanuel Kant. Uh, let's see here. Uh, remember, on the Critique of Pure Reason, um, I said that there's some indication in, in, in what Kant says that he started out trying to prove that the noumena exist, that the monads of Leibniz uh, exist, you know, uh, maybe not exactly uh, Leibniz's exact monadology, but something similar to that. Uh, and, uh, and then he discovers that he's unable to do so and really says that we have no knowledge of the noumena. We really can't give any description of them and, and we don't know uh, what they are at all. Uh, and then in the critique of practical reason, he rehashes a lot of the groundwork of the metaphysic of morals, um, but then goes on to make a peculiar argument, a particular argument here that's that's interesting and what I call it is the, the back door to the noumena because especially when he, when he focuses on the formulation of autonomy and that um, the individual, when they contemplate practicalities, how they're going to take action in the world, uh, they will come to the categorical imperative. And then especially in the third formulation in terms of autonomy, this gives um, us, you know, the rational person, the notion of free will and the idea that our actions are our own. And this then gives us, an, uh, this then introduces to us uh, through the through the third formulation of the categorical imperative, it introduces us to the notion of uh, a soul that has free will, that we are not mechanically determined. And so at a bare minimum, we can have knowledge that the soul exists and even begin to grasp some aspects of the human soul. Uh, and so here we get a little bit of the noumena uh, back in practical reason. And so although pure reason cannot theoretically tell us about the noumena, practical reason tells us about the human soul. And um, and, and, you know, and from Kant's perspective, that's quite an accomplishment because there was this kind of defeat to the, the traditional way of approaching metaphysics of trying to use pure reason and really analytic reason, you know, leads to this synthetic a priori stuff. Uh, and that uh, just pure reason doesn't get us the noumena, but practical reason because we become a legislator un, uh, of our own self, gives us this notion that we are a soul that has free will and can make independent choices in the world. And therefore we are not mechanical and programmed to behave in the way that we do. We're making choices and that at least is a little bit of the noumena and, um, and then we do get the we do get the feeling that he wants to use that as a foothold to then really rebuild the whole um, metaphysics of the noumena uh, in something elaborate like like Leibniz, uh, but he does hold back somewhat. But uh, then he does have another book called the called Religion with the within the limits of reason. Uh, where he does elaborate a little bit about theology, but he's very cautious. He's very cautious, but uh, but certainly he gets the concept of the soul 
back into a system by the critique of uh, practical reason. Uh, okay, so that, that's just a little interesting uh, sneakiness on his part uh, that I particularly I particularly like just just for its sneakiness. Uh, not that I not that I agree with his whole metaphysics or anything. I just like the way that he puts the ideas together. Uh, 